Ephraim? 11 was 21 and 12 is 1.4. Samuel? 8 was 0. 0.00008. 4 zero. Point four zeros and 8. Charles? I sure can. Any other questions over answers first? Kevin? 17 is 6x squared minus 4x. 19 is C. Ellie? 13 to 1.6 times 10 to the third. Campbell? I'm sorry. Answer to number 5 was 6 comma 6, negative 3 comma 6, negative 3 comma negative 3, and 6 comma negative 3. I just need to multiply everything by 3. The scale factor is 3, so everything gets multiplied by 3. This would be the part of the show where you would jot down the notes to remember for tomorrow. The triangle is 180 degrees. Square is 360, triangle is 180. Anything with four sides will have 360 in it. Anything with three sides is 180. Charlie asked about number one, I guess. Right, Charles? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the thing to remember about number one is it asks you for capacity and it says cubic feet. Anytime you're asked for how many cubes are in something, it is asking you for volume. And fortunately for you, Charlie, you sketched this thing. It was 20 feet long by 10, 10 feet wide, 20 feet long, and 8 feet high. It's a rectangular prism. And that's the nice thing because the volume is just the length times the width times the height. You don't have to worry about that whole area of the base thing because this, it doesn't matter what the base is on this. They're all the same. So it's just volume equals uh, 10 times 20 times 8. 10 times 20 is 200, and 200 times 8 would be 1,600 whatever things that is. Now, it should not be a terribly difficult one. It's just multiplying the three dimensions together. I have a question on the answer for number 6. Is that it was 40 degrees? Well, let's look at number 6. This is your gist here with children, okay? You need to know what Aiden said. You need to know that a triangle does have 180 degrees. And we know one of the angles of the triangle, by the way. That little square means that's 90 degrees, correct? All right. What else can I figure out? I don't know, for those of you, somebody put, what, 50 degrees? How did we come up with 50 degrees? Well, not for that angle. This 130 degree angle plus this angle here that makes a straight line, so you can tell what that is. That, that one has to be 50 degrees. Because 30, 130 plus 50 gives you a straight line, which is 180. And then you know you have the 90 degrees plus the 50 degrees. You have 140 degrees total now. What number would you add to that to get 180? That's where the 40 degrees comes from. Another way to think about it is, you already have 90 degrees, so these other two have to add up to 90 degrees. So 50 degrees plus what number is 90 degrees? That's how I got 45, and I just was assuming that they were equal. Unfortunately, in math, you cannot assume. The only way you would know they were equal is if these, if they would tell you that these two sides were equal, then they would actually be equal. But there's no hash marks, there's nothing there. No way, no how. Bye bye. Live! If I were doing seven, what's it? What's the question for seven? Um, uh, the highest side. Uh, all right. First of all, it doesn't ask you. It does not ask you what's the difference between the highest and the lowest selling point. It says the highest and the median, which is the middle one. So you need to number one arrange these in order from least to greatest. Did you? What's the what's two nine? I'm just gonna do the first three digits because they all oh no they don't they don't all do. so it's I'm gonna change my size it's two ninety seven five hundred right yeah. and then three twenty eight yeah. and then what's the other three forty five and then uh, three eighty nine. And then the last one is 415,000. There are how many numbers there? Five 
what one would be the middle of the five? This one right here. So 345,000 is the median. And from that, you have to subtract the highest selling price, or you take that away from the highest selling price. So it's 400, it's not acting right. 415,000 minus 345,000. And that's where the $70,000 came from. If you got that wrong, where did you go wrong? Um, I found the mean chapter. Oh, you found the average? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that might have taken you a lot longer. Yeah. Adding all that and dividing up. Anybody else? Why you got this wrong? Who else got this wrong? Ephraim, what did you do? Um, I mixed up all the Again, so make sure you order from least to greatest. That is pivotal. Let's see if I can shut up something here. Let's see if something's using a lot of garbage. No, not really. Yeah, Chrome always does. Samuel! Can you do the first Love to do the I'm going to rewrite it just because so I have it here. Uh, 2 to the third, x to the negative 1, y to the 0, x to the third. Uh, as we said before, we don't do well with negative exponents, Sam, so what do I do with this x to the first? Negative 1 power, I move it to the bottom, it becomes x to the positive 1 power, which is just x. Okay. 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2. It doesn't cross off with anything, so that's where the 8 comes from. On top, I have x to the third, which is 3x's, and on the bottom, I have 1x. So that 1x will cross off with 1 to the 3 and leave me with 2x's, which is x squared. And then anything to the 0 power is 1. So what is 1 times 8x squared? 8x squared. So change the answer there. And where'd you go wrong on that, Sam? Um, and what'd you get for an answer? How about that? Yes. Charles? Can you do number 10? Is that on this page? Or yeah. um, always guess wrong. That's the way it works. My business. The bag contains 10 right, 20 marble, 30 blue marbles with one marble drawn. What's the probability the marble is not red? Charlie, did you happen to draw anything out for this or just go on your own here? Now you wouldn't have to. There are 10 reds in this bag. There are 30 blue in this bag. And there are 20 white. Right, Charlie? Yes. And they want to know the probability that you don't get a red marble. So first of all, how many total marbles are in that bag, Charlie? 10. There are 60 of them. And how many of those marbles are not red, Charlie? There is your probability. You just need to reduce it by both by 10. You get by 6. What did you get for an answer, Charles? How did you get 7? That'll do it every time. Be careful. Ellie Norquist. Twelve. All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, this is all about our equations. Remember the rule of equations? Same thing. We talked about this yesterday, didn't we? Your goal is to get the letter X by itself. What do I have to get rid of? I have to get rid of the 3 in front of it and the 1.8. Which one do I always do first, Ellie? Which one do I get rid of first? Yeah, and how do I do it? I do the opposite. So I subtract 1.8 from this side. You subtract 1.8 from 6, and you get what? Did you get 4.2, Ellie? And you will see the last step really on an equation is 90% of the time you're going to divide by whatever's in front of the x. And I need to see that on your paper 
divide by 3, divide by 3. How many times does 3 go into 4.2? No, we can do the math here. It's going to be 1.4. 3 into 4.2, bring the decimal straight up. 1, 12, 3. Sixteen. Uh, Sixteen. We talked about this on different occasions as well. Remember, the fraction line is like a grouping symbol. You have to do the top all first, do the bottom, and then the last thing you're going to do is divide the bottom and the top. So if I take 1.2 and subtract 0.12 from it, lining up those decimals, we end up with this. Did you get that on top by chance? Um, yes. Okay, so I have 1.08 on top. On the bottom, I have 0.12 times 2, which is 24, or 0.24, <coughs> correct? Um, yes. And then this is just a matter of doing the division. You take 0.24 and divide it into 1.08. You get 0, because it doesn't go into 10. How many times does it go into that? What is that? 4 is what? 16, 1, 8, 96, 20, 20, and I believe you get 5. 0. 0.045, was that the answer? It's 4.4. Sorry. Oh, I forgot to move this over. Sorry. Is it 45? 4.5. Two decimal places. Where'd you go wrong, Liv? Um, instead of 0.24, I got 24. Yeah. Sorry, I should have done that. Order. Nicer there. Aiden? Or number seven, did the uh, forward, did you say it was 41? Four, number. Seven or four? Four. Four is forty what? And can you do this? Yeah. It's really not too bad of a deal. I got the answer and I still don't know where the ladies go. First of all, the rule of unit multipliers was to take what you're given and put it over a one. So you should start with one hundred and twenty-three feet. Remember labels are the most important over one, correct? Then I multiply it by that conversion fraction slash unit multiplier that gets feet to cross off. So where does feet have to be? On the bottom. I'm changing it into yards. So yards has to go on top. There are three feet in one yard. So now your labels cross off. You're left with 123 over 3. And if you do that math, label left of yards. If you do that math, it's 41 yards. That helps, sir? Yeah. Liv? Yes, 17. 17. Absolutely. What did you get for an answer? Can I ask? I got 4x squared minus 4x. Okay. And here is the deal, ladies and gentlemen. 5x squared plus x squared. It's just like this. Now, if I had them here. If this is an x squared, I have 5 of those. I have 5 x squared. I can't put three x's with that because x's and x squares are not the same thing. It's like x squares are boys and x's are girls. I can put this one x squared with it, which gives me a total of five x squareds plus another x squared are six x squareds. Okay, minus three x is like you have three minus x's, and then you have another minus x. Well, what do you have there? You have four minus x's. 4x. That's as much as you can do. x squareds don't get along with their partners. x's, you can't put them together. They're not the same thing. I might as well do 18 while we're sitting here. 
18, in order to do that, and anytime you see parentheses, parentheses, you should think distributive property. I need to get rid of those parentheses before I can figure out if I can put something together with that 3x. So what happens when I do the parentheses? I multiply the 2 times the x and the 2 times the minus y. What is 2 times x? 2x. What is 2 times minus y? Minus 2y. What happens when I put together? What are my like terms? They are the 2x terms. 3x's plus 2x's is 5x's. Notice they don't become x squared. So that's when you multiply. When you add them together, they stay the same. And minus 2y. Charles, what was your question? Um, can number 9. Number who? 9. Number 9. Charlie, did you make a table? Uh, did you label x and y? Yeah. And how about this? What did you pick for x? They don't give you numbers, so you get to pick. What did you pick for x? On your table. Okay, you need a few of them. Two, three, and one. So, Charlie, if I have my function that it calls there, x minus 2. If I take 2, put it in for x, what is 2 minus 2? 0. If I put my 3 in for x, what's 3 minus 2? No, it's not minus 1, it's plus 1. And then here, for x, if x is, x is 1, what's 1 minus 2? There's negative 1. And these are your ordered pairs that you can use to cover to make your line graph. What is 2, 0? 1, 2, 0. 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. And 1, negative 1. And you get that line right over there. Miranda Massey? Can you be number 8? I hope so. The diameter of a human hair might be Write that number in standard form. You know, I'll, I'll, the only thing they're asking you to do is change this from scientific notation to a normal decimal number. How does one do that? The exponent of 5 tells you what? How many places the decimal moves. And if it's a negative exponent, it moves backwards. So, remember, people think this is how many zeros you add to it. That's not always the case. Sometimes it might be. In this case, it does not. One of those places gets taken up by moving it past the 8. And then I'm going to have to go four more to get to five jumps backwards. One, two, three, four, five. And all of these, you need to fill in the gap for zeros. So it's point four zeros and eight. Which is what? Tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand, eight hundred thousandths is what that is. Eight hundred thousandths. And rule note to self. What did you put? What did you actually get? Did you actually put 800,000? Did you move the decimal the wrong way? Negative exponents give you big decimal numbers. Positive exponents give you big, big numbers. Ronnie Johnson. Well, would you say the answer was to 14? Number 14 was uh, 1.2 times 10 to the 8 power. Charles? You need to remember sweet. The machine can produce 120 plastic dinosaurs in eight minutes. How many can it produce in an hour? Well, there's a couple different ways you could do this, Charlie, but probably the easiest one is just to do this. 120 plastic dinosaurs in eight minutes. It's a ratio. You can make a ratio box. How many can it produce in, here's your time, how many this is it makes, here's your ratio, here's your actual. But I'm not doing it for eight minutes, Charlie, I'm doing it for how long? An hour, which is how many minutes? You can't just put a one there, this has to be a 60. So you want to know what that number is there. Which means 120 over eight equals 10 over 60. There's a couple different ways you could have done this, you didn't have to. Uh, now, something to be watch out for. We talked about, well, that's not good.
Charlie, how am I going to solve this? Sure, I can cross multiply. 8 times what number is 60 times 120? Which means what? 120 times 60 is 0, 0, 12. 7,200, and I'm going to divide that by 8. And if I do that, I'm pretty sure I end up with 900. Another way you could have done it, I mean, if sometimes math is different for different of you, you could have figured out how many machines it makes per one minute by dividing 8 into that, which maybe some of you did, which is what? 8 goes into 120 15 times. If it makes 15 every minute, you just have to multiply that by 60, and that'll tell you how many it makes per hour. Same difference. Say, so if that's the way you're thinking about it, that's fine. You know, this is some, whatever works for you on your particular floating day. Or I could have, which would have been what if I reduced this? This would have been 15 over 1. We've got time for a couple more, boys and girls. Don't leave a math problem on the table. Daniel. After all that, please again, let me reiterate, there is absolutely, positively no reason why you should miss this one. Write the note to yourself. Whatever they say the scale factor is, you multiply that by every number. And that is your new coordinates. You don't have to draw it. That is just your scale factor, and that's the new stuff. 6, 6, uh, negative 3, 6. Negative 3, comma, negative 3, and 6, comma, negative 3. Note to self, it doesn't get any easier than that problem right there. Right, Charles? Nobody's, uh... What's that? I should do 20. Well, the first thing I write down is my well. The diameter of a cylinder barrel is 20 inches, so that's your first thing. What is the area of the circle? My second thing, what's the area for a circle? A area is pi times radius times radius. Really, the math doesn't get much easier on that because we know pi is 3.14. Please know this is the diameter, not the radius. What's the radius? <coughs> the radius equals 10, so it's 3.14 times 10 times 10. And 10 times 10 is 100. It's a matter of moving the decimal two places. So your answer is 314 inches. That's a pretty big gun, isn't it? Oh, oh it's just a barrel. I was looking at it as a gun, but that'd be more like a cannon, wouldn't it? 20 inches. Hey! I need to make sure something's on the side so I can make sure they can stop. That's a good one. Which one was that? Uh, That's always worth repeating because people make that mistake all the time. Okay. Problem number 14, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. To do it, you multiply the lefts together. Everybody probably got that. That's 12. And you write down times 10. When you multiply in scientific notation, you add exponents. So 4 plus 3 was 7. And a lot of you got 12 times 10 to the 7th, but that is not the answer because it's not in scientific notation. Scientific notation, the number in front has to be between 1 and 10. So you need to take the decimal and move it that way, which means it starts here. You move it back one place and get 1.2. And the rule to remember in scientific notation is if you make this number smaller, the exponent gets bigger. Think opposite. I moved it smaller by 1, so this gets bigger by 1. So my actual exponent is 10 to the 8. The number becomes smaller, exponent gets bigger. Think about it, balancing out. Write yourself a note. Make sure you have that. Chloe? Number two. Who? Two. Number 2. And number 2 would be a percent box here's my percent what am I comparing Chloe I'm comparing incorrect answers to correct answers doesn't matter what I put where incorrect correct and total answers 
What do I know about all this? I know that I have 85% were correct. Oh, wait. I'm not sure where I even came from. 85% were correct. So how many total, what's, uh, everything in percents is 100. So how, what percent was incorrect? 85 is correct, 15 is incorrect. That's what your percents should look like. You're splitting it into those pieces. Then the question is, um, six were incorrect. So where does the number six go? If six are incorrect, next to which number? 15, 85, or 100? Six is incorrect. With the incorrect. And then you just need to know which one do you want. Do you want to know how many were correct or how many total questions there were? Total. So I don't need this piece. I need this. 15 over 100 equals 6 over what number? And again, if it doesn't work out, your choices are either reduce this or do what Charlie, we did on that last thing, and cross multiply. 15 times what number is 6 times 100? And if you divide 600 by 15, you end up with 40 questions. Time half expired, ladies and gentlemen.